Hey, it's Kat here to chat to you about arrays. What I've got on the screen there, bread, milk, eggs, butter, cheese, juice, that's a list. And arrays are basically like lists. So it's a collection of items of the same type. This array is six items long. We've got item zero, item one, two, three, four, and five. Remembering that everything in Java starts with zero and it counts up. So if we have indexes zero to five, that's the same as saying six items. So an array is like a list. It contains numerous items but all those items must be the same type. It is indexed using zero and counting upwards. Now an array is a type of object because it has complexity. Now if I want to declare that I have an array of strings, so let's recreate that list I just had. First of all, I have to declare that it is a string type. Then my square brackets indicate that it is an array and then I give it a name. So I'm going to call it shopping list. That is my declaration. Then I have to go through into init and I need my instantiation. And this is where I say that shopping list is equal to new string. So it's saying it's a new array of strings. And then in the square brackets, I have to say how long it is. So an array can't have its size changed on the fly. You must set it to start with. Now that we've instantiated, we also need to initialize. So initializing is giving each of those different array positions a value. So to do that, we refer back to the name which is shopping list. Then we need to say which position we're referring to. So zero is the first one. Equals and then the name. So the first item in my list was bread. We'll then go on to the second one. Shopping list. Position one was equal to milk and so on until you've got all of your items. So remember that if your array is six long, that means that you'll have indexes zero, one, through to five. You will never have index six. When we want to output the contents of our array on the screen, we can do that in a drawstring. So we would use g.drawstring and then we would refer to the list item that we want to put on the screen, zero for example, and whatever the X and Y are. Now that's going to get tedious, especially if you've got a really long list. So actually the other way that you can do it is because you know that the indexes are zero, one, oops, zero, one, two, three, and so on, that's a pattern that increases by one each time and that lends itself perfectly to using a for loop. So what we could do rather than writing a drawstring for each and every item in our array is we can set up our for loop. So for int i is zero because remember that all arrays start at zero and then we want to loop until we hit the end of our array. What we can do is continue looping while i is less than shopping list dot length. So it can actually find out our length. So we knew before that it was six long. That means that our last index is five. So if I test for less than the length, the last value counted there will be the five and it will be fine. And there we're going to increase by one. 
and then we have our curly braces and inside our curly braces we have G dot drawstring. I'm just going to use a shortcut, use DS. That will not work in your programming. You need to use the full drawstring, but it's uh, it's a little bit hard for me to write. Uh, so in there I would put shopping list. And then rather than putting 0 or 1 or 2 or whatever in the square brackets, I use my loop counter, which is I. And then I put in whatever my x and y variables are. Remembering when we're going through a loop, um, if you want the items placed under each other, you will need to use a y variable and increase the value each time. Alternately, if you want them printing across the screen, you need to change your x variable. So let's have a look at how we would actually code this particular list. Hey, so in Eclipse here, I've set up a new project called Arrays, and I've just set up a basic template for any old applet. Okay, so as with all our declarations, it goes in the class. So we were creating a string array. So these are square brackets. I'll put a space between them. Square brackets, they're just, uh, just sort of underneath the delete button on my keyboard. Um, so square brackets, you don't actually want any spaces between them. We've got a string array called shopping list. And in public void in it was where we wanted to do our instantiation, which was shopping list equals new, where are we? Hang on, shopping list equals new string. And then in the square brackets, how long it is going to be. Remember that you need to know how long your array is going to be before you declare it uh, because if you want to add items later you can't do it in your manipulation you must do it in your original declaration sorry in your original instantiation. Okay so also in there we'll have shopping list square brackets the item number that you are giving a value to and the item itself. So I'm starting off with bread. Now, I'm going to need six lines almost exactly the same as that. So I'm going to copy it. Two, three, four, five, six. So if I go through and change the index to zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got bread, milk, cheese, eggs, uh, remember, it, this is about uh, learning about arrays. Really doesn't matter what items you actually put in this list. And I've got butter there. For the same token, I could have done student names because I'm a teacher. Um, that's usually a fairly good example with me. Okay, I've declared I will have an array of strings called shopping list. I have created my array of six items long and then I've given each of my items a value. Now as I said I could put that out in a drawstring so g dot drawstring and I'll put shopping list item 0 and I'll put that at let's say 20 20 semicolon let's run that and bread appears on the screen so for me to print out every item, if I've got six items, that six lines exactly the same as that. Or I could do it in three functional lines of code by using a for loop. So I declare my for, int i is equal to zero. We want the loop to continue while i is less than the length of the shopping list. Now when you use shopping list dot length, that is one of the very few occasions where you can use a method without the brackets. Okay, now length of an array is the only time that you can do that. Otherwise you do need the brackets. Our counter will increase by one every time. Put in my curly braces and I'm going to move my drawstring into there. I'm going to replace that zero with i and I need to decide if my if my items will appear down the screen or across the screen. Because they are strings they're going to vary in length 
So I think it's better to go down the screen. So I will use YPOS. So I'll declare my int YPOS just up here. Started off at 20. And we have YPOS equals YPOS plus 20. Okay, now we'll run that one again. Bread, milk, cheese, eggs, juice, and butter. So we've got all of our array items there. Let's say, for example, I wanted to put the number before the shopping list. Now, because the number is I and a drawstring needs a string, I need to put a dummy string in front of that I and then I'll also put a space between the number and the shopping list item. So this one's a dummy string that, that indicates to drawstring, yes, I am trying to draw a string. Then I add on my variable i, which is counting 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Then I put a space between that counter and my shopping list item. Then I added on my shopping list item. Okay, there's our array. Okay, in that first example, we created a string array. Now let's have another look at just a integer array. So we would say int square brackets and then the name of our array. Let's say, for example, we were, okay, this is not necessarily a real life example, but let's say we were creating an array of the six times table. So I'm going to call, I'm going to call that one six times. Then I would say six times equals new int. And back when I was at school, when we did our times tables, we went up to 12 times. Now in this particular scenario, each of the array items is increasing by a known amount. So it is a, a set pattern that we can follow. The first one is one times six then 2 times 6, 3 times 6, 4 times 6. Back when I was talking about printing these out to the screen, I said, well, if we're going to increase the number by 1 each time, let's use a for loop. We can do the exact same thing for filling an array if it is uh, based on a known pattern. So this one is int i equals 0, Continue looping until we get to the end of the array, so 6 times dot length, and we want to increase it by 1 each time. Alright, so in our array what we're going to do is rather than put in a drawstring or whatever, we're actually going to use it to change the value, or in this case actually assign a value, to each array position. So for the first array position, well, for all of the array positions, we put i. So the first time we go through our loop, i is equal to 0, then 1, then 2, and so on. And what we want to do is multiply by 6. Now, if I pop i in there, i times 6 in the first loop, i is 0. In my book, 0 times 6 is 0. I would actually like to start with 1 times 6. So what I can do is add 1 onto i and put it in brackets so that this happens first. This little line doesn't actually change the value of i because it doesn't say i equals i plus 1. It's just replacing the i with i plus 1. So the first time around that's equal to 1, second time around that's equal to 2, and so on. So that will just assign values to each of the array items. Now I'm going to copy that loop. I'm going to pop it in paint so that I'm out able to see the output. So I can get rid of this because I don't want to see, I don't want to change the values again, but I do want to pop that in a drawstring. Now remember that a drawstring expects a string. So if I'm giving it a number value, I need to give it a dummy string beforehand. Then I'm going to put it at position 20 and then YPOS because I'm going to print them down the screen. 
So I need to also declare an int ypos. I will start it off at 20 and in my loop I will increment it by 20. Okay, let's just run that one. And there is the result of my six times tables. However, I'm going to be a little bit picky. If I was to see that feedback and I saw those numbers, it might take a little bit of brain power to associate those numbers with my six times tables. So to be nice to the user, I should give them more feedback in that draw stream. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say whatever the number is times six equals. So it actually looks like a times tables. So first of all, I'm going to, I need to put out the value of i plus one so that we'll have um, not zero the first time, but one the first time. So I'll put in brackets. Now if I'm doing maths inside my drawstring, I need to put that in brackets. So i plus one. And then I want to have, so I need to put this one in text, times six equals in the text, and then add on that variable to be interpreted. So the dummy string so that it knows it's a string, adding on to that the number i plus 1, so first time it's 1, second time it's 2, and so on. Then to be interpreted exactly as it's been typed, we have times 6 equals, and then whatever the current answer is. So let's just run that. And that just provides our user with a little bit more feedback as to what's actually happening. So that's just a quick demonstration of an array using an integer, also a different way of filling an array and much the same way as with the strings of printing out the contents of an array.